All right, let's compare this kohlrabi, the same variety, the same seed starting date, the transplant date just a tiny bit later than this kohlrabi in our Kratky hydroponic setup. Don't underestimate how thirsty your plant is going to be. Guten gardening, everybody. One of the cool things about experimenting in the garden is that you learn something new all the time. And I guess that's one of the things that we enjoy so much about gardening in general is just all the knowledge that's out there that comes from other people, other places, and of course, the most beneficial knowledge that comes from our own trial and error. A couple of weeks ago, we started some kohlrabi in a Kratky hydroponic system. It's a non-recirculating hydroponic system that simply involves water with liquid nutrients added, a small container with growing medium, and of course the plant, and then some massive root growth. A simple setup that is perfect for vegetables in that 30 to 40 day to maturity range and can even be modified in some ways for vegetables that take a little bit longer. And over the past couple of weeks, this kohlrabi has grown from just a little tiny transplant to about an inch in diameter where we are today. And along the way, I have definitely learned from some of the mistakes I've made, even though, again, this is a really simple setup there are a couple of things that I need to do to improve on how to grow in this system in the future. And the most important thing I think that I need to do in the future is to not underestimate just how thirsty a plant like this kohlrabi can be. Because as you can see, over the past week and a half, as it's really started to bulb up up top, the roots down below have continued to develop and they have continued to drink the water that's in here. The fertilized water that's in here is way lower than I initially intended. And so one of the things that I have to do is to replenish the water supply, again, with a little bit of this nutrient laden water. This is the same fertilizer that we used early on, the liquid fertilizer. I don't have a ton of it in here because I don't want to harm the plant by overfeeding it, but I definitely need to get some more water in here. But the fact is that as the water level decreases, the roots at the top begin to transform. They modify themselves and become able to respire. So this is where they're breathing in the oxygen that is up here at the top, that nice moist oxygen at the top and still feeding on water. The roots that haven't transformed are still feeding on water down below. And since the roots at the top have transformed and are breathing in that air and are no longer working in the same way as the roots that are down here at the bottom, if I were to just refill this all the way back up to the top, I would in all likelihood drown the plant. So I would have the opposite effect of what I'm intended, which is just to keep the plant fed and keep it watered. So I cannot refill all the way up to the top. Instead, I have to pick a level that's going to work for this plant, that's going to keep it in good, healthy shape. If I just leave it as is right now, if I just set it and forget it, which was my thought at the beginning of this experiment, pretty soon, I mean, based on how quickly this is drinking up the water, pretty soon the water would be gone completely, and then we'd be in a whole world of hurt. So in all likelihood, what I should have done is kept the level at about halfway consistently instead of letting it get this low. So what I need to do right now is to determine how much water I can add into the system and not drown the plant and then try my best to keep that water level at a consistent level. So what I need to do in order to understand what level I'm going to be able to keep this water at is to first identify where the roots have transformed into those oxygen breathing roots. And I can show you that today based on the research that I've done so that you can see exactly where that cutoff is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this with a Sharpie. I'm going to mark the jar with a Sharpie so I can see where that level is. And then I'm going to try to be consistent about adding that water back in to keep us right around that level. It will also be interesting for me to see just how much water this plant is drinking in a single day. 
because I actually, again, am surprised at how quickly, how thirsty really this plant is as it grows. I think that's one of the cool things about this experiment is that you can see the process that you wouldn't normally see in the ground. You can see the process happening. You can learn a lot more about just how much water these plants really need. So let's take a look at the difference between the roots that are breathing in the air and the roots that are still feeding and taking up water. Now, if I take a look at the roots in the water inside the jar here, you can see that the ones at the bottom are nice and stringy. They're kind of all over the place, feeding in and taking in that water. And as I get up top, it's much more matted. But I want to show you that outside of the jar because I think it's easier to understand exactly what's going on. So I'm going to pull this out gently. I don't want to keep it out of the water for very long at all, but I do want to show you this. You can see what I'm talking about. They're looser at the bottom. They're, again, just stringy looking, and then they get more matted the farther up we go. Well, first of all, this is a really impressive root structure. I mean, it's awesome to be able to see all of this happening here. But if you look at the top, you can see something that's very different. Right in this area, right in here, we see it happening. It's almost kind of puffy looking, almost like a fibrous material that's very different than what's happening right below that level. So right in here, we have that nice bit of stringiness. And right up here, we have where again, it started to puff out. It's definitely changed the way it looks. That's the area right in here, according to our research, that is really taking in that oxygen. So if we were to bring the water level up and cover this area right in here, that's where we would start to see the plant drowning. Well, I want to show you one more thing before I put it back in there. All of these roots are extending from just a few small holes up top. So they start out in this small area and then they just turn into this massive web of growth. All right, I'm going to get this back into the water. Again, I don't want to hold this out any longer than I have to. And now let's look about feeding. So if I'm looking at where I was just now in terms of where those roots started to transform into the air breathing roots, on this jar, we're looking at about 750 milliliters. So this mark right here, which already exists, that's about where we were when we started to see the root transformation. Now, one thing I don't want to do, again, is go even a little bit too high because I, I know it's not an exact science, but I don't want to endanger the plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark, even though I have this mark right here, I'm going to put a mark a little bit lower beneath this so that I don't endanger any of the roots up above here. And that place, once I get that mark in there, is where I'm going to refill and try to keep it at a consistent level. All right, so here's our mark, and this is where we're going to try to keep our water level fairly consistently. So I'll come down and check every couple days. And one of the other things that this is going to enable me to do is see just how much water this plant is drinking in a given day. And what I have here is, again, some of that room temperature water. I don't want to shock the roots with cold or hot water. That would be a problem as well. So this is some room temperature water with a correct portion of the feed of the nutrients that are in there as well and so i'm going to go ahead and add this up top and the way we're going to do this is lift this off gently to the side and then i'm going to pour it in until i reach that level that i was talking about below so this is now the level where we're going to try to maintain our water as we move forward gardening is truly a craft where you never stop learning especially as you're experimenting, there are going to be speed bumps in the way. So you have to figure out a way to work around them, a way to improve them. And if you're not taking something from, if you're not learning, then in the future, you're not going to see the improvements that you need. You know, as we're trying to feed our family from what we're growing indoors, and now as we transition to spring outdoors, we have to make sure that we're on top of our game and we're paying attention. Paying attention makes a huge difference as we plan going forward. Well, here's to hoping the next couple of weeks of growth are going to be massive. We're definitely going to keep an eye on what we have going on here. We've got our mark. We've got our position, our water level position. And we're going to be consistent with this kohlrabi to make sure that it, when the time comes to harvest, is absolutely 
ready to go. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video today. Hope you found something useful. If you have not tried the Kratky method, you should give it a shot. It is, I mean, it's working great. At the beginning of this video, I showed you a kohlrabi in a soilless potting mix that had the same seed starting date as this kohlrabi in the Kratky setup. And I think you can see some of the benefits of trying to grow in this method, especially when we're talking about space saving, speed of development, and all around simplicity. We just have to keep our eyes on exactly what's going on. And again, this makes for a fantastic experiment for the whole family, especially if you wanna learn more about root development and how your plants are really growing. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what your thoughts are on this Kratky method. Remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.